Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my backyard. Today we're gonna be working on restoring these benches. They came from Sarah's, her grandparents' house, and she thought it'd be kind of cool to do for them. So today you're actually gonna be seeing Sarah do some of the uh, rework on this. So let's dive in. These benches had been restored before and uh, have been refinished several times over, but they were in bad shape. Most of the wood was rotted through and most of the bolts were rusted pretty close to solid. <laughs> and uh, yeah, some of them were a lot more difficult than others. And uh, just be careful, the wood was so rotted that several of them broke and that piece fell down. <laughs> so we had to go through and take them all off. I ended up uh, ordering a bunch of stainless steel uh, nuts and bolts to replace them all so that they will last much longer into the future. But you can see the wood was just totally rotted out. It just, it, they broke off rather than um, unscrewing them all. Once we got all the hardware off, now we can start working on the frames themselves. And these are all cast iron. Uh, one of them had been uh, broken in the past and re-welded, and we had to do uh, some re-welding on that, but I was able to do that. Unfortunately, I uh, wasn't able to do the, the video on the welding up. But uh, what we're going to do is clean them all off. They were covered in a bunch of gunk, and so we sprayed them off, hit them with a wire brush, uh, cleaned off any of the, the paint that had problems. Most all the paint on this was actually pretty good as they were redone um, not too long ago. But there were a few spots with some rust coming through, and we wanted to just make sure we, we cleaned them down. Originally, I was thinking about blasting them all off and removing the paint completely, uh, but we decided to just uh, scrub it and work with what we had. Now, for the new wood, we're actually going to be using white oak. Yay! I'm kind of surprised there, huh? Yeah. But white oak is incredibly rot resistant and is a great wood for this in that it's durable, will last long, will good, be good outside. So let's go back over this. We're going to put a coat of uh, primer on there. And this is uh, supposed to bind with any particular rust that is still in there. There wasn't a lot on it, but there were just a few spots to hit and make sure that we, uh, we got those up pretty good. And that way we could be ready for the main coat on it. Now we need to cut all of the oak to four foot long. And I use a buck saw here because it's incredibly fast. It's not terribly accurate, so I'm not getting right onto the line I want. We're gonna come back and, and cut them all to their exact length a little later. But it is very, very fast and cuts through it. It's designed for cutting through logs. So if you're doing wood like this, it goes pretty well. Now we need to cut this all down into strips. And to start that, we need to joint one edge. And that will give us a true edge that we can then measure off. So I'm going to use my number seven and come along it and joint the edge down beautifully flat. Gave me a chance to let my uh, wife try it out. And uh, yeah, she uh, she was having a, a bit of a trouble with it because my bench is up at well my height and she's four foot ten. So um, she's holding it up by her armpits. I think we might have to make a bench for her. But now that we have one true edge, we can grab the marking gauge and line off from that. Most of the slats are two inches, uh, but on each bench there are three slats that are inch and a half where it has to go around the arch. And then we can cut it all to length. Yay, cutting, and more cutting, and more cutting. There were 36 slats, four foot long, that all had to be ripped down. And that ends up being a lot of lumber to go through. But it was a fun chance to let my wife uh, try it out. And she ended up cutting, I think it was one of them, maybe two of them. But uh, yeah, it, it's a, a good bit to learn to cut uh, white oak all the way through with a handsaw. But she did it, and it was uh, yeah, one of those experiences. Now we can take them back over to the bench and clean up the other face on all of them. And again, it's jointing, and so we were trying different things for her. We had a, a, a small stool for her to step up on. But most of the time, it, you had to walk along it because it, it was a little longer than she could actually wrench, reach. So she would uh, do a little bit by little bit, take a step, and do a little more. Let's go back out to these. Now we're going to put on a coat of black because we want to uh, return them back to their normal black. It was a, uh, a fun experience to uh, teach my wife uh, how to spray paint. But now we can get on to um, chamfering all of the boards. And this is a little squirrel tail that actually fits my wife's hand. The block plane was a bit too big for her. Uh, so the squirrel, squirrel tail works perfectly. And uh, this is one I got her for her birthday a year or so ago. And <laughs> she finally had a chance to use it. Uh, but it is really good for just taking the edge off and chamfering it down, just three or four passes on each corner. And you get that nice feel so you won't be uh, biting yourself when you sit down. Um, I'll just do it with the block plane and run it out like this. But it was harder for Sarah to hold it and uh, run that along, so it was easier for her to put it in the bench. So uh, if you don't have the full strength to do it, always think about putting it in the bench. Chamfer all four edges and then both uh, both ends all the way around, getting them nice and clean. Now we need to drill holes through them. And so I'm marking how far in from one edge. 
And then my wife is marking how far in from the end. Uh, so we put that crosshatch there that gives us an X to then put the uh, brace and bit and drill down through. And so we drilled all the holes uh, for the quarter inch hardware to go through. And again, it was another chance to experiment with the, the height for my wife. She actually has a stool to step on, and she was having a hard time um, getting the force down on it for that very end. Um, so we lifted the stool up that allowed her to get a little bit more down onto it. And the more you get above it, the more force you can put down on it for that last little bit where the screw isn't pointing forward. Yes, my wife is a nurse, so uh, she gets to use gloves. Um, they're a bit big because the only ones I had in my shop were for my hands. But we're going to be using a penetrating epoxy from Total Boat. I'll leave a link to this down below. Um, I really like using this for outdoor surfaces. It, it soaks into the wood, and if there's any bit of punkiness into it, it will, it will solidify it and harden it. And in this case, it will it basically will plasticize the outside of the wood. Um, I, I have done a wood sealer in the past, but I really just like doing the penetrating epoxy. I find it to be a little bit more uh, durable in the long term. And you just coat it on, make it really, really thin, especially for this white oak. It's not going to soak up that much. So spread it around, really, really thin it out, and it will soak down into the wood and harden up the outside surface, allowing it to weather much better for the long term. So we're going to let that epoxy sit, and then we're going to give it a quick sanding and then start putting on the varnish. Because we're going to be doing this outside, and it's for my grandparents, uh, they wanted a uh, gloss uh, finish on something that's nice and shiny and the uh, the total boat gleam uh, varnish is one of my favorites for uh, that particular application really good durable finish that is designed for being outside it's designed for boats and so it's going to last for a long time we're going to hit it with a 400 grit sandpaper in between each coat you want to rough up the surface just a little bit get it any get rid of any high spots and it will clean it down uh, we ended up doing three coats on the back of all of them and five coats on the face and it gave it a really nice clean surface. After the sanding, come through with a rag and wipe off any and all of the dust and then put on your next coat. And remember, thinner is better. Um, we were doing, doing it straight out of the can for most of them. Um, on the last two coats though, I poured it out and used a, a bit of a thinner in there to uh, give it a really, really uh, thin coat at the end that gives it that extra gloss that you're looking for and shines it up. But uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy with how this, uh, this all comes out. And it gives it that, that uh, outside finish that you're expecting to see. If you've seen a lot of like old uh, wooden boats that the, the sides have been shined up and the, the top looks good, this is probably what they were finished with. And now we can put it all back together. Yay! Uh, this is where the stainless steel nuts and bolts come together. Uh, we had to spend a bit more for them, but it's well worth it because well, they won't rust. And that was one of the problems, the, the, the rust was getting into the wood. And particularly with oak, you don't want the rust to affect um, the oak. And so these are non-magnetic um, stainless steel nuts and bolts with um, Allen key heads uh, so that they are much easier to put in rather than Phillips. I hate Phillips. <laughs> but yes. So uh, the... Um, yeah, so we had to flip it over, and then there are a couple braces that had to go on the, the back that connect them all together in the middle. And so for these, we had to pre-drill down in a little bit and then put in the screw. And so I also got uh, square head stainless steel wood screws to go into these. Um, and so we could drive these in. My wife did not have the wrist, wrist strength to drive in these Robertson screws. One of the problems with stainless is you have to be careful. The head pops off if you over-torque them. And yes, you can still roach out stainless you can still roach out um, square head screws, Robertsons. But with a little bit of time, um, it can be be done. So it was kind of an interesting experience for my wife because it was the first time she's um, driven in screws quite like this. Um, so learning how to seat the head and drive it in. The little things like that that you don't quite think about when you're doing it for a while. But uh, it was fun to work with her. And maybe she'll be doing some more in the future. It'd be kind of fun if she add another project for herself. So there are the three benches. Now we can take them back over to uh, my wife's grandparents' house and uh, try them out. I was really, really happy with how they came out and hopefully these will last for another 50, 60 years. Um, with the, the varnish, you're gonna want to recoat it about once a year or so. Um, and as long as you don't um, let it go too far, you just take a 400 grit sandpaper, hit the surface, and then put on another thin coat and it's good for another year or more. Um, if you're going to be doing it with something that's not quite as protective, you might need to do it more often than that. And in all honesty, you could probably get by with uh, more than uh, longer than one year. But uh, if you do it once a year, they will stay looking this good forever. 
and then we can let my uh, grandparents take a look at it. They were very, very happy with them, so that's that was what was important. This was a, a fun one. I was not a whole lot of woodworking in it, but it was great to be able to do it with my wife and uh, do it for family. And it was I'm, I'm really happy with how they came out. They look great, and out on my uh, my wife's grandparents' porch, it uh, they they really fit in well. So it gives them a place to come out and sit and enjoy the sunlight. And when the family gets together, we can all go over there and relax and have a, a good time together. So these were a lot of fun. Hope you liked it. So there you have it. This was a lot of fun for me. Did you have fun? I had more fun than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> Minus the heat. <laughs> and we're still married, so this is a good thing. And talking to each other. So uh, if you'd like to see more projects with Sarah, let me know that. Maybe we'll be building a bench for her in the future or something of that nature. It'd be kind of fun. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> if you do have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know those down in the comments below. I do read through as many of those as I possibly can, and I'd love to hear what you have to say. I think that'll about do it for today, but I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. I know I say it every week, but really, without the patrons, this channel would not exist, so thank you for that. If you'd like to help out with that, there's links to that down below. And if you do happen to meet anyone who's scrolling over the side, tell them thank you, because they're the ones keeping the lights on and keeping these videos coming. So thanks for that, and until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye. After a project like that, it's rather surprising that my wife hasn't benched me yet. Ha ha ha.